So today we have an update on the entire Sneeko situation after he became very upset over the fact that some of the biggest streamers in the world had been straight up ignoring him. Yes. Have fun, guys. Okay. Thank you. And then chose to vent to Logan Paul's left nut and of course DJ Academics. And those conversations can be summed up as him questioning, why don't those grown men like me and want to spend time with me? To other grown men, while they just shrug their shoulders. And this might be the most reaction thing we've ever had on my channel, as you have Sneeko reacting to Agent, reacting to my initial video on this situation. And here we're gonna see Agent's thesis on basically why people are not fucking with Sneeko. Yo, I'll tell you why, I'll tell you why I think Nick ignore Sneeko. Why? Because Sneeko puts people in positions where it's a lose-lose often. Like, he'll ask questions that, like, he wouldn't mind answering because he already lost those opportunities for himself. But those people didn't make that decision. And it's probably a lot of people on the line. It's, it's like a lot of people relying on him and shit like that. So I don't want you to ask me no controversial-ass question that I have no business in anyway. You feel me? If you're in the business of podcasting, the whole point should be seeking the truth. That's the point of having a microphone and speaking to an audience, is trying to get to some sort of truth. If you're not willing to figure that out, turn off the microphone. That's just such a stupid point of view to have. Like imagine it's like a Nintendo podcast. Hey guys, I know we would normally talk about Mario and why he saved Peach today, but- Today I actually want to talk about the geopolitical state of the world. Like this is a Jaden Smith ass talking point if I've ever seen one. I think that some of these guys get so much in their conspiracy bag that they start making comments like this. Well, everybody's watching the Super Bowl watching Taylor Swift chug a beer. The Palestinians are getting even more and I think this was one of the, the biggest days in a while it's not to say that you're a normie or an NPC for watching the Super Bowl but you are because it is but they do that strategically during major events while Ice Spice is wearing an upside down cross specifically <laughs> so that you don't realize what's happening so you got to raise awareness for this stuff like can you guys believe that one event that has been going on and been like a massive spectacle for the last 60 years is still going to go on while something else bad happens in the world? Like obviously media does serve as a form of distraction, but so does damn near any other form of entertainment. And you know, he put me through that before in the past too, where he was asking me a whole bunch of questions about things I really had no insight in or care for, but it's like, it's controversial. So it's like, you kind of have to have an opinion or niggas get mad at you <laughs> <laughs> while taylor swift is chugging a beer on live tv for your entertainment they're moving people out of the gaza strip it this dude just loves that fucking talking point because when we were kids and we were learning about the holocaust and we were learning about nazi germany we all had this idea like I, if i was there i would have stepped up i would have said something how could this have happened i would have i would have well it's happening right now today and you're saying nothing you're doing nothing and it's just funny to me that he wants to bring up the tragedy of the Holocaust when it's convenient for him. When over the last couple of years, he has quite literally platformed and been buddy-buddy with people who literally denied the entire thing. And he himself has spoken favorably about the man who caused all the genocide. So I thought about Nick about a year ago looking for the truth. And I think that's how a lot of people find America first because it is inevitable. Like he spent the greater part of the last year speaking very poorly about Jewish people. But now that that situation can be used as fuel towards his argument, well, he's all for it. I think it just goes to show that when you're always like looking for attention and trying to rage bait people and just say the most controversial thing to pop into your head, you become kind of like the boy who cried wolf. And then when you try to actually talk seriously about something, People are like, oh, that's just that guy, he's always yapping. And I also do not think like these online activists who are constantly posting these things onto their story are any better than anyone else. Like they're not getting anything more accomplished. Sneeko would also go on to further discuss him getting ignored by Aiden Ross, Kai, and Speed. Like these two people didn't completely ghost him when he got canceled. Where were Kai and Speed when you got banned on Twitch for saying there's two genders? They can't say it, they never will. They completely ghosted you, Aiden, because you were brand risky. What happened to the friendship there? You know who was there? Kai, when you got accused of a allegation, when last year, New Year's Eve, when they tried to accuse you of who was there on stream defending you while everybody else was silent? While everybody else was like, what? I mean, I get what he's saying, but Jesus Christ, does he just come off as almost like 
the nice guy to me. You know, it's like when the girl goes back to her douchebag boyfriend and this nice guy is calling her complaining like, why don't you want to be with me? When he did you dirty, when he slept with that other girl, I was the shoulder for you to cry on on all those lonely nights. So why are you back with him? Honestly, I think the biggest mistake that Sneeko made in this situation is expecting loyalty, expecting friendship, or anything of the sort from people whose sole infatuation seems to be becoming increasingly more famous and essentially networking their way up to the top. I've been to some of these influencer events, guys. I've hung out with people who it seems like they're just on a mission to get into a room with the most popular person that they can. And I quickly realized like this shit is not for me. So I get what he's saying. I just don't get how he could be so naive to that idea when he has been around influencers for his entire adult life. Aiden Ross on Rumble Sports next to two Rumble creators while I'm sitting on the other side. That just blows my mind first off. But second off, the shit that really, but you have to understand that. The shit that really f pisses me off, look at Aiden Ross's shirt. Fourth or fifth or shit. It says brand risk. Aiden Ross is wearing a shirt that says brand risk, bro. I, I see, I just, take, give me that shirt, bro. Give me that take that shit the right the off your chest. What do you mean risk? What are you, you fucking joking me? Bro, you're ba basically getting initiated into the Illuminati. So it seems like Sneeko wants to be the only controversial guy in town. And I don't know, I just think this guy comes off as more envious than anything else that someone else could actually say some of those things and still see quite a bit of success and get in with these mainstream people. Because you can't tell me that if he was afforded those same opportunities that he would not take them. They try to lump me in with these other influencers. I want to reiterate right now, I am not like these other niggas, man. <laughs> I am not like one of these other influencers. I'm not them. I'm not like those other girls. The only videos that they allow of me on YouTube right now are videos of me getting punched in the face. If I'm ever clipped in a positive way on YouTube, they take it down. When it's ever something negative, when it's a hit piece, when it's a documentary trying to shit on me, Sneeko got humbled, they keep it up. <laughs> on TikTok, my face- I'm sorry, Sneeko, I'm sorry, bro. Needs to be blurred. <laughs> they need to call me sneaky -o on TikTok. Who else streams on Rumble? My generation, who else is doing it? I mean, the guy did pretty much make his bed and now he's having to lay in it and it seems like he doesn't really like it. It goes back to the point I made earlier. When you're trying so hard to go against the grain and be controversial just for the sake of being like the biggest brand risk you can be because he obviously takes extreme pride in that. What do you mean risk? What are you, you fucking joking me? You can't also be surprised when you face the effects of your actions. Now I will say, I think it's gonna be very interesting to see where Sneeko's career goes from here. For Sneeko, it's like not everyone's gonna be your friend, bro, even if you've showed them loyalty. And the only other point I'll make is that when it comes to any business, any corporation, entertainment or not, they're always going to value the people who are bringing in the most income for them. So not everything is some conspiracy or some censorship. Sometimes they're just making the smarter business decision. And it's like, hmm, do we want to go with the people who have all this influence and they have all these young fans who are going to be consuming media for years to come and spending money on media for years to come? Or do we want to go with the guy who has been saying controversial things just for the sake of it for the last couple of years? When you weigh the business decision, logically one just makes more sense. Either way, y'all let me know what you guys think about this situation down below. As always, I do want to thank you guys for watching today's video, dropping a like and subscribing but as y'all know it's been your boy tan superman some other stream of drama out who needs to be covered so i'm out peace